Hey y'all, welcome to another oil painting tutorial with me, Carrie. So in this tutorial, we're gonna do this very moody evening farm scene. So we've got a barn and a couple of trees and a little fence here. And we've really set the tone with all these dark elements in silhouette and then pumped up some of the other elements with the um, the pink sky that's kind of highlighting everything. It was a really fun piece and it came together really quickly. I painted it on a wood panel, a birch panel, but you can use any paintable surface, um, canvas paper, whatever you want. Yeah, so let's get started. So I've got my palette laid out here with labels. Hopefully you can see that. And uh, just a reminder, you don't need all these paints. This is kind of my, this is my normal palette. But if you're just starting out and you don't want to invest in all the paints, you just really want to have at least one of each of the primaries. One yellow, one red, one blue. And really, you can get away with any of these ones or different ones. It's totally fine. Uh, titanium white is helpful and raw sienna is helpful. You don't need the purple, you can mix that. Okay, so I've got cad yellow pale hue, cad yellow hue, cad red hue, permanent alizarin crimson, phthalo blue, French ultramarine blue, dioxazine purple, and raw sienna, titanium white. Okay, uh, I've also got some paper towel, some palette knives for mixing, and a variety of brushes. I use a combination of the natural hog and the synthetic, um, just because I like the differences between them. I find the, the natural hog more firm and good for laying it down thick. And then the synthetics are a little softer, so better for areas I want to be softer with. So you try them out, see what you like. I have some water because again, I'm using water mixable oils. I use the Windsor Newton Artisan series, water mixable oils. And you can buy a small starter set that has um, the basic colors in it. So I'd recommend that if you're not sure if you're gonna continue on, if you just wanna dabble a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna start with an underpainting and I will have an image here so that if you'd like to trace it, you can. I like to do my underpainting in oil paint. Some people like to go from underpainting straight to color. So if you're sort of like that, you know, you need, I don't want to say impatient, but um, if you want to continue on right away, use acrylics for your underpainting. That'll speed up the drying time. But I should note, I'm using a wood panel today. It's a birch wood panel. And these guys dry really fast. So I will probably carry on after about 20 minutes of the underpainting. It should be dry enough to paint on. So that's an interesting little thing I learned recently. Um, okay, so we're gonna take some raw sienna and some cad red hue. Again, if you have a lizard crimson, feel free to use that as a substitute. That's totally fine. Or just raw sienna on its own is a good underpainting. We're just toning our canvas here, um, our support, whatever it is. I've got wood here today, but you can use paper or canvas. I have some leftover paint from an earlier piece I was working on, so we'll just mix it all together. And I like to take whatever the biggest brush is possible because I'm just gonna cover this whole thing. Take some water, add it to our paint. And again, if you're using regular oils, you'll just wanna use solvent instead of water so you don't get any <laughs> strange things happening with your paint. And then I'm just gonna fill this whole thing up with my underpainting color. I like the orange because it's uh, kind of bright and poppy. I started out very traditional with just the raw sienna and that makes a very, really nice underpainting um, imprimatura, they call it. 
underpainting color there. The whole point of this is to really just get the white out. We're creating a mid-tone and then all we have to do is think about our darks and our lights. It makes the process of finding values a lot easier when you start with a mid-tone. Okay, all done. Rinse out my brush. I think about it like sculpture. So I heard that analogy somewhere that painting is like a sculpture. So when we add a mid-tone value to our surface, the next parts are darkening and lightening. So you can think about it in sculpture like adding pieces or taking away pieces. And it just kind of helps me visualize what I'm doing. Okay, so the next step, I like to use purple for my my sketch. Some people are more on the fan of like a red, like a lighter color. So you do whatever you like. If you don't have purple, you can easily mix it with one of the reds and one of the blues. But I use it a lot, so I tend to have it. So I use it. <laughs> Okay, this is going to be a an evening sunset photo I took um, on a drive, and I'll show you the photo reference I have here. I'm just contemplating what I want to show and what I don't want to show here, because I've got a square, so I've got to sort of figure out what caught me was really the purples in the sky. This is beautiful. And then how the light shines through the trees. And I love the fence. I may not include all of it because it's a little much. But I think definitely something along this lines here will be included. So we're just going to go for it. I always like to start with a horizon line. That sort of sets the tone of everything. So this is going to be, let's see, maybe a quarter of the way down, roughly. It's a big sky, but it also has some interesting trees and a barn here. So I'll do the little bushes in the background there. Kind of got to find out where this barn lies because that's going to help me decide everything here. There's a fence too, so that will help me decide what goes where. Um, I'll just rough that in there. And if you want to trace my sketch, you're welcome to do that too. So, but you can follow along here with me too. Then this tree comes around here and down. And I just keep using water as I need to with this stage. I find the any support canvas or wood tends to be dry at the beginning when we don't have anything on it, so Water helps the paint flow a little bit better. And I'll just fill this all in pretty dark. You could switch to a bigger brush uh, for that, but I'm just going to keep it simple right now and use this one. And it kind of goes dark to light. That's okay, I like that. Most of this is like in silhouette here, so it's pretty dark to begin with. Now we have another bit of tree up here. And it's nice to give your trees like a little bit of a contour, like um, not perfectly round or, you know, they are natural trees, so they're going to have interesting shapes. And then I don't worry about the holes where the light's shining through at the beginning. I'll do that afterwards. So I'm just going to fill it all in pretty dark here. Okay, and then 
I think I'll do the fence afterwards and let's switch to a larger brush because that'll be a lot easier. So I'll just take any larger brush. Woo, this guy's got some crazy hairs. Sometimes I trim them a little because they get a little, a little roughly. Um, Okay, so I just want to darken the grass down here. It's pretty much all dark down in here. Well, yeah, you're not really supposed to leave your brushes in the water, so I don't know if you can see that, but I do it sometimes. Okay, now, um, let's get this fence in. So I'm just going to completely darken that and then I'll go in and remove some paint. So I think I'll use, I'll try to use this same brush, just a brush that has like a nice edge to it. So you want some water on your brush. We're going to remove a little bit here of the paint and let's see, can I do Something like this. So every once in a while you just have to clean it out because it gets too much, whoop, too much paint in it. But we're just, now we're in the removing of the sculpture stage. So we're removing paint and creating highlights here. So I don't need to do all the lines, I just kind of want to show the general shape of this fence. Maybe I'll switch brushes here. So I just have a smaller flat brush. And this could be a stage you do afterwards too. That Totally personal how you paint. I just wanted to lay it down so I don't lose it. I might paint some of it out, but at least I know it's there. Okay, now the barn is also dark, but it's not as dark, so I'll just do a little bit. Um, it's pretty dark here. I like to paint with the shape of things, even in the underpainting here. It's going to help me decipher what's what a little bit better, so... So as long as you can tell the difference, you know, where the, roughly where the trees start and the barn starts, that's good. Now the sky is going to be, it's going to be light at the bottom and darker at the top. This is a good light tone, so I might just darken the top a little bit here. Take some water. And I'll just start this side because it's a little darker up here and fade it out. And that might be enough. Let's see. A little bit more. Yeah, that's good. So that gives me the idea. Um, comes in a little bit down here too. That's good. A little cloud in there. 
Okay, so that's a perfect start to our painting, and I'm going to stop there. So, um, if you're following along with me, this is the underpainting stage. Um, if you're working on wood, it should be dry pretty soon. I'd say 10, 20 minutes or so, and you can continue on to step two, which will be adding color. Um, but if not, you might just want to let your painting dry for a day or two. Okay. Okay, I'm all gloved up. Um, this is sort of an extra precautionary measure, so you don't need to wear gloves. Um, with, you know, all oil paints. Uh, most of these are hues, so when I, you know, looked into it, there really wasn't a lot of extremely, you know, dangerous pigments um, because they're all like imitations that I'm working with for the most part. So it's just, you know, my my comfort level. I'm just used to wearing gloves. Okay, let's do some magenta in our sky. So I think I might use my alizarin crimson. Ooh, this is a good side note. I put this palette in the freezer. It's my first time attempting to freeze paint to save it. So this was put in on Tuesday. Um, and today's uh, Thursday. So it's been in there for a couple days. So it probably would have dried up on me um, in those two days, but it's really nice. It did take a little bit of time to defrost, but not long, like five minutes or so. So that's good to know. You can freeze your oil paints, guys, to save the life of them. Extend the life a little. Okay, so we're making a magenta sky. So I've got a lizard crimson. I think I'll throw some French ultramarine in there, and then it needs to be a little bit lighter. So I'm going to grab some white, give it a good mixeroo. Not too shabby. Make sure you really scrape your palette because you'll find there's often paint hiding in there, which can change things a little bit. There we go. I like that color. I'm going to make a couple shades for my sky. So I'm just going to set this one aside over here. I'm not used to working with such a tiny palette, but I wanted to fit it in and still show you a good amount of this. So I'm working a little small, but you work with whatever you're comfortable with at home. I normally have a big 18 by 18 inch palette, but again, I always work bigger too. So, um, okay. So then I need a light color, which is going to be like a peach color. So let's use some cad red hue some white and a little bit of cad yellow. That's nice. And then I'll do one more shade, which is a little bit lighter. So I've got three main colors in my sky here. And we'll go white. And I might just even mix what's on my palette here. Palette knife and palette. It might need a little bit more color, but let's just see what this does. Not bad. Make sure you get all the color off your palette knife. Really mix it in. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna just use that. Love when that happens. Okay, so there's my three colors. Um, let's start there and then we'll mix more as we need to. So. 
I like to start with a big brush. This is my big brush. Doesn't have to be a filbert, but any big brush will do. Okay, and then I'm just gonna take the dark and that's gonna be the top section here. And it sort of curves, you can see my lines here. This is where my dark kind of curves in here. There's a tiny bit of it swoops in here too. Get that. Okay, now I think I'll transition and I'm not even gonna clean my brush because I just wanna go straight to the next one and throw that down. And I'm just gonna blend the two here. And bring this down here. And it's pretty dark on this side, so I'll carry this down to the bottom. And just continue that swoopy line there. And it gets quite light uh, in this area here. So let me just finish this. And now I might just flip my brush over to the side I wasn't using and use my light color in here. And that goes right down here. Okay, and then I wanna soften the edges here. So I'm just gonna blend it in little bit more and maybe we'll pick up some more of this color. And skies are very fun to show some expression. So I like to do big swoopy lines and get kind of bold. You can kind of see it goes up this way from the photo I'm working on and swoops in a little bit this way. Okay. It's pretty good. I um, might just throw a touch more of this in here to thicken that up a little bit there. And then back in here. You don't want to overwork it, so I might just stop there. Yeah. Okay. So I, you can see how I kind of rotate my brush around to sort of go from light to dark colors. That way I don't have to wash it. Um, every time you rinse your brush out, you're adding, in this case, I'm using water. If you're using regular oils, you, you'll have solvent, but either way, you're thinning it down and it's hard to get your brush back to being completely dry again after you wet it. So it thins down everything else you do. So I try to avoid cleaning them too much if I can help it. Okay, so um, let's get into the dark shades here. So a lot of this is in silhouette, so a lot of it's gonna be fairly dark. 
So I will make a dark shade. Sometimes I just use my purple, but um, if you don't have purple, basically any dark, any blue and a purple will work good. So let's take phthalo blue, some alizarin crimson. I do need a good amount, so I'll take a good scoop of each. I like to add a little bit of yellow to soften it a touch. And it's a little bit on the green side because it's a lot of trees in here. So maybe a little bit more yellow. That's good. Okay, so that'll be my dark shade. There's also kind of um, this barn in here which has like a red on one side, on the side here, and then sort of a blue roof to it. So let's mix those up. Now what you can do with the red, it's pretty dark. So I'll just take some red, I'll take some of this dark shade, and I'll mix the two together. And oftentimes, if I have a photo I'm working with, I just hold it up to the photo to check the color. And I'm happy with the way that looks. Might be a little hard for you to see, but that looks good to me. So that's my barn red. And I do want to do the roof too. It's always nice to have a bunch of colors mixed up and then it doesn't slow you down painting. Um, so I kind of do them in batches like this. So take some yellow, some French ultramarine, and a little bit of white because it's faded. You could use either of the blues. Uh, you don't have to have both of them. Sometimes it's just like an intuition. I wasn't even really thinking there, I was just like grabbing paint. So <laughs> sometimes there is a method to the madness, but not always. <laughs> it's a little bit more green uh, than I want it to be. So I'm going to add a little bit more. Let's go with Thalo blue. Thalo's the stronger, strongest of the blues. So you just be careful when you're adding it because it it's much stronger than the, like the other blues. So little goes a long way. That's what the color I was looking for. Okay. So there we go. Okay, and I will take, I'm just going to go down to a slightly smaller brush, a little bit more manageable for my trees. So I'm going to take my dark color and I'm going to go very close here to the sky and it might bl blend a little, that's okay. Not to worry. And I'm not going to worry about the the sky holes. What I, I'll do those later. So I'm going to paint the whole thing in and then add some sky holes, light shining through. You don't really want to do just like a basic shape. So every once in a while I have a little bit of a, you know, a branch jutting out here or there just to give it some interest. And it's going to overlap our barn a little bit here. And then I'm just going to fill this all in.
Okay, and I'll do the same for this tree. And I don't worry about like these parts that blend between the sky because it actually works in your favor a lot of the times. So embrace that. That's pretty good. Now it is pretty dark down here too, so I think I'll just carry this dark down here. It's going to lighten up as it comes down, but it is fairly in shadow. And it looks like, yeah, there's some more bushes in here. I might edit my photo a little bit, so I'll just put one bush here and show more of the barn on that side. It's the nice thing about being the artist, you decide what goes in and what doesn't. Okay, so a little bit more shadow under this fence will help it pop out. And over, over on this side, I'll just be consistent here and I'm just going to carry that shadow down here too. Put it in here as well. So that's pretty good for our darks. Now, I do want to lighten it up before I go too far. So I might mix one more color here. So let's do Cad Yellow and French Ultramarine. This is a great color combination for a uh, nice army green because they're both warm colors so they make a really good tree green foliage green okay so I will throw that in um, now let's just see here I'm kind of using one tree they've got there's two in my photo but again I'm artistic license so there's a little bit of shadow or sorry highlight coming on this side here kind of all over the place there's a little bit of back shadow there i think that's a term i'm not sure i could be making that up <laughs> more uh, more highlights over here. Sometimes you really have to read into your photos and emphasize things a little bit more than they really are. And you just get used to, you know, knowing how far you can push things as you get more comfortable with it. Actually, now that I have this green, I see that it could work really well down here. So I'm going to throw that down here.
And I want to create this sweeping effect of the field in here. So I'm just going to progressively lighten this up a little bit. So I'll take some more yellow, maybe just a little bit of that green. It's always easier to work with a smaller amount when you need to lighten things up. That's nice. Okay, and there's some some light stuff happening on the side here, and then it kind of swoops down here, which is fun. The field kind of dips and dives there. It's nice to show some of that purple too. I think I might leave some some of the purple showing. Um, now again, I'm taking some artistic license here, throwing on this light color in here, because I just think it's really interesting. Maybe I'll throw a little bit more dark. And then I always find it fun to just do one big, bold, stroke every once in a while if you want to emphasize something there we go okay now there's a little bit of stuff happening back there so let's do that Okay, so there's some some faded bushes in the background and I want to set them back from here. So what I like to do is just take this color, okay, and mix some... If you have a gray on your palette, that works really well. If you don't, just take some white, some yellow, some, like a little bit of everything. Okay, I'm just going to take some gray that I have here, mix that into that dark color, and that's going to instantly desaturate it. And again, this is a part here where I'm emphasizing it more than it actually is, but I like doing that because it really sets it in the background there. So there's no confusion on our viewers. They know this is behind this. Okay. All right, now we can probably get to the barn. That's the fun bit. Um, we'll get to the sky holes in a little bit, but I just think I want to lay in some of these colors here. So let's do the red, which is going to be here and then down here as well. Also, I like to brush with whatever I'm painting. So with this barn, I'm going to paint it vertically. And that makes it feel like it's standing up. I'll sort of zig around, zigzag around the tree, but then once I get it in, I'll do the same on this side here. So my brush strokes are vertical, and that really helps it give it shape. Okay, and the same with the roof. So again, sometimes I'll just use paper towel to clean my brush instead of water because I really want these colors to pop. I don't want them to lose any vibrancy with my water there. And that's a little brighter than it maybe should be, but I'm just going to see how it goes. There's also a clear definition between the, the angles here, so I'll need to show that a little bit. Okay, so what I think I'll do is I'll use 
some of my dark color here to show that pitch change. You can also use that in the bottom side of this here and maybe on this side here. Okay, and then as well, we can also add a little bit of highlight. So I'll just take a light color, add it to this green. And in my picture, it's a little, just a little bit brighter on this side there and kind of all the way down here. There's also a bit of highlight, interestingly, on this side. And a little bit there. Okay. All right, now I think I can go in with those sky holes. So I'll clean my brush. I'll use a smaller brush for this one, and I need to pull this color in the sky. So I'm gonna go with this one here. And sometimes I, I like to use my palette knife to scrape it up and get a little bead of paint, and then it's easier to get a nice thick amount on your brush, especially when it's a small Small bit we need to paint lay it on thick. So I'm just gonna do a couple little sky holes. I, I don't know if there's a nicer name for them. It sounds kind of funny, but that's what I call them. That's what I think everybody else calls them. <laughs> it's easy to get carried away with these, so I'll try my best not to. I sort of like to brush with the tree branches. And then we have some over here as well. Now I gotta think about where the barn starts and stops because we don't wanna have one where the barn is because that doesn't make sense, right? So think about where your barn is situated and make sure they clear the barn. There's a couple up top. There's usually some near the edges too, where the branches start getting thinner. That's pretty good. Okay, now this color is also kind of the fence color. I'm not sure if I have enough, so maybe I'll just mix a little bit of this in here. And some white. Close enough. Okay, so this was gonna be for the fence here. Some people like to use a palette knife for really fine details. I've just never been a fan of the palette knife for that kind of stuff, so. Um. but I like the way this is coming along. I'm gonna fade this part out here. Um, in my picture, it sort of fades into the bush, but my bush isn't quite that big, so perhaps I will cap it off here. And then I'll just, again, fade this one into this side here. I'm not worried about getting every single spot, but um, yeah, just kind of in the distance there. 
And then I, I think it needs to be a bit toned down. So I'll just take the paint off my brush here, scrape it off. And then I'll go in with some gray. Again, if you don't have gray, just take some white, some yellow, some red, some blue, a little bit of everything. Um, okay, and then we're just going to touch a few spots to break it up. Maybe where the shadows are in the dark spots here too. Okay, and another thing we can do is kind of clean your brush off here and then go into the dark again. I just feel like some of these are a little chunky, so I'm going to thin out some of these fence boards a little bit, maybe at the bottom. Okay, it's looking pretty good. I think I might add a little bit of highlight to the red of the barn. So I'll just take, again, just whatever light color you've got on your palette, white or, you know, anything here. And I'm just going to touch a little bit of this. Maybe not that dark light, but... A little bit of this barn. There's some windows, but again, I don't want to get too fussy. Um, there is a little bit of the fence going through there. And that might be good to show. As long as I can show it, you know, making... As long as it makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, then maybe leave it out. But if you can put it in there and it makes sense, go for it. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty good. All right. Now I gotta be careful about getting too finicky because I feel like it's getting close to being done here. Um, there's like a little bit of this pink on the roof. I can just see a tiny bit of it. Which is kind of nice to show the reflection of the sky on the, the rooftop there. Okay, I think maybe a little bit of green in there and this is good to go. Just feel like a little bit more pizzazz down here. Maybe some more highlight on this side. And some white is going to be good to fade that to the back. So throw some of that in there. Um, maybe some gray because it's a little bright. A little too bright for my lagging. That's better. Okay, and then... Let's see here, what can we do? All right, that's pretty good. Now, there's a touch of red in the tree. That's the only other thing I see that could be good to add, so I'll just take some red and mix it with some of my green. This is just the sky kind of lighting up around the tree here where there's some sky holes, I like to call them. <laughs> sky holes, let's come up with another name. 
um, sort of around the edge there. I don't want to do too much because I do like it, so I'll just be careful here. Famous last words. Okay, if there's a spot you feel like it's too much, maybe we'll just tone it down a little. All right. It's good to take a step back at your painting and look at it from afar. Gives you sort of fresh eyes. So you can do that when you feel like you're getting close. I think it's good. Pretty happy with this one. Okay, so clean your brushes when you're done. They'll thank you. And um, here's a little close-up. So I think we really achieved that evening light here with all this dark and this really dramatic sky. Very nice. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this. And I'll see you in the next tutorial.